All right, so today's chapter is number 16, and it's called Factors. So the learning objectives for this chapter are first understand uh, how to create factor variables. We're going to use the general social survey data set that's in the package for cats, and it's um, coded as GSS underscore cat. And then using that same package for cats, we're going to see a series of functions that are going to help us reorder some factor levels or modify some of those uh, factor levels. So it's going to be super, super easy to work with. And I always forget about for cats. I always forget it. And then when I'm doing anything with factors, I usually just do mutate or just as factor and Really, really going through this chapter, it reminded me that for cats is it's really super useful. So let's go through this. Um, so first of all, factors are essentially categorical variables, right? So there are going to be variables that are fixed and known set of possible values, right? Like they can only get a certain amount of possible values, and so then it makes total sense to use factors for some of those categorical variables that you already know what possible values those categories, right? Those possible values that they can take. It's also useful when you want to display character vectors in a non-alphabetical order. So as always, we're going to use a tidyverse. And like I mentioned specifically, we're going to be talking or using the for cats package. So let's start with uh with the basics. Let's start with an example. So let's say I have this vector x1 in which I put four months coded as December or D E C, right? December, April, January, and March. So I only have those four values inside my string. And so this could be a character, right? A character's vector, then there would be no problem with that. But If I want to sort it, for example, it will always sort alphabetically if it's stored as a string or as a character. So then that's not really useful when we know already that there's a level or pre-established order for our, for our levels. So that's one of the problems with using strings that kind of rise, right? Another one is that there are 12 possible values, even though I only included four. So I already know that there, there's a set of possible values that, I, that my vector can take. And another thing is that there's no way of accounting for typos uh, if I'm using a string or, or a, uh, just a character vector, right? So for example, in this case, if I have Jan instead of Jan for January, there's no way to account for that typo unless I do, or I classify this vector as a factor which is the way to fix these few issues, right? So fixing these problems is very easy when we use a factor or when we set this vector to be a factor. So first, let's start a new example by creating all the possible values that um, our vector can take. So these are going to be our levels, our la valid levels, which are going to be all the months, January to December. And then when we do, when we just want to see them because we set them in order or we input them in order from January to December, they're always going to be in that same order, right? Right now, this is just a character vector, but we are going to be following the, that same order of levels when we create that factor, when we create that factor. So let's say we have another vector called Y1, and then we set it up as a factor. And we hope that x1 is, in fact, a factor. And the levels that it can take are going to be the ones that we just created before. When we sort that y1 vector, we are going to get it in the specific order that we have our levels in. So it's going to start with January, then March, then April, and it's going to end in December, right? Even though we're not using all the levels, at least the ones that I am, the value that I do have, are going to be organized in that preset order that I set my levels to be. If you omit some of the levels, they'll be taken from the data alphabetically. 
So for example, if I do factor X1, um, then it's going to be December, April, January, March. If I set, wait, 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 if you want me to level, oh, if I, I don't set the levels, if I only do factor X1 without the levels, then it's going to be organized alphabetically. That's what this thing is saying. Um, okay, the levels, which are, can be seen here, I suppose. April, December, January, March. The levels are going to be alphabetical. It's not clear now. So certain values, if you don't include them in the levels, you have to be very careful that they are going to be set as an A. So this, I put it as a warning because I've been here and then I don't understand why I have an A, right? So any values that are not in the level that you set as levels will be set as silent, will be silently converted to an A. They will be automatically converted to that, to an A. So for example, here, let's say I have a fact, I have a Y2 vector. I set it up as a factor and the vector that I am using is X2. So um, X2 is going to be, um, if you remember, this was from the previous example here. X2 is the one that had the type of here, jam. Mm -hmm. So because jam is not in any of the levels that I set as month levels, then that one is silently converted to an NA because it's not in that level. So to avoid this, because then you don't, you don't know if that's really an NA or if it's an NA because of this situation that happens when some levels are converted to, to an A. So undefined levels, I suppose, are converted to an A. So to avoid all that, what we should do is use this package called for cats, specifically the function called FCT, instead of using the function factor. So if we do, for example, here again, with Y2, Y2, but we use for cats FCT, again, the X2, which is going to be the vector that we're using, and then we set the levels, again, the same way as we were doing with factor. What it's going to do is it's not going to process the vector. It's going to throw us an error saying that all the values of X must appear in the levels. And then it's going to tell us exactly what the missing level is so that it's super easy to see, oh, is that a typo? Is that a level that I didn't consider? Right, so that we can go from there. And if you need to access the valid levels from any of the... Um, factors that you use, you can only do, you can just do levels Y2 for levels of the factor that you just created. And then the console is going to give you all the levels uh, that you create. So that's super easy. And that's one way of justifying why using FCT from the for cats pack, uh, package instead of just base factor. So other ways of dealing with factors is um, for example, if you want the order of the levels to match the order of the first appearance in the data, then we have to use this function called unique, which is part of the, I think it's tidy R or deep layer. You never know which one it is, but it's part of the tidy or something. Or unique after the fact, we factor in order. It's what? Uh, unique is from just base R. Oh, unique is from base? I thought it was yes. from. No. Um, so, ah, I always thought it was. Ah, oh, I always thought it was. Um, did I say? You're right. It's base. I always thought unique was from the tidyverse. Some of them. Okay. Well, you learn everything. Where is my screen? There we go. You learn something new every day. All right. So if we do. With unique, for example, if we do factor X1 and then the levels, but instead of just naming the levels, we set them with unique. What it's going to do is it's just going to organize those levels in the order that they appear. So if the first one that appears is going to be December in the data, right, the, the way that we have that vector, then that's going to be the first uh, level that we have. So the order is going to be uh, 
set based on the position that they appear in in the in the vector that you have. Um, so if we use for cats, we can do FCT in order, and that's going to help us organize them in whichever way we want. So for example, here we have another vector vector called F two, and then we pass the x one to um, to the factor function, and then we pass it on to factor in order. Then we're going to be setting those levels again in the order that they appear, right? So December, April, January, and March, because that's the order in which they appear in that vector. So this is another way of doing it. If you don't want to use unique or if you don't want to use factor uh, level, was unique, right? The factor in order is another way of organizing the levels like that. And then when you do levels of two, you can see that that's the order that we found. Um, another way that we can deal or that we can deal with factors is that we can also create a factor when we are reading data using the read R package uh, and using the call factor um, argument. So if we have, for example, the CSV uh, file or the CSV data, and then we do read CSV, which is a function from the read R package, and then we want to read that CSV file, but then we define the type of column immediately using call types. And then we set that, that whatever name we want to give that column, in this case, it's going to be month. We set it as call factor or call underscore factor. And then we set the month levels, which we already created, right? It's a vector that we already created. That's going to give us the, the order that we want this thing to follow. So then it's not going to be in order of appearance. It's not going to be in alphabetical order. It's going to be set in the order that we want them to be. So then when we do DF dollar sign months to in order to see the levels and to see the, the possible values that this could have, we see that our levels are predefined here. And this is these are the values of our vector. So, um, so this is actually very handy. immediately after when you're reading the, the CSV that you want or the Excel file or whatever it is that you're reading, if you do um if you define that column uh immediately use the call factor um by setting the call the type of the column, right? So that I think that's very handy or very um efficient way of dealing with factors as you're reading the data. So if we go to the general social survey this is going to be like an example of how we can use all the different for cat functions to deal with factors. So yeah, so they're, they're both the same. Yeah, sorry, Flores, I just saw your, your comment here. Yeah, they're both the same. It's just that different ways of doing the same thing, I suppose, either using unique or factor in order. So anyway, um, so let's go through this example. So the General Social Survey is a long-running U.S. survey conducted by the independent research organization NORC, or NORC, at the University of Chicago. And this survey has thousands of questions. So in GSS underscore cat, if you do, uh, if you already loaded your library of four cats, then just by doing GSS cat or data GSS cat, um, you, what you're going to see is just a, a handful of uh, some of the functions, some of the uh, data that is collated from the general social survey. So, for example, if we do that, let's see, an example is going to have, it's a very long table because it has 21,000, over 21,000 rows, and we have nine variables, so it's going to be year in which is an integer. Then we have our first factor, which is going to be marital status. Then we have age, which is an integer. Race, which is going to be a factor. R, I don't know what the R is, but essentially this is the income that each person is saying that they are, uh, that they have, the annual income, I suppose. The, um, so this is also a factor because it's 
like a, a, a interval of uh, numbers that it can, uh, or a category, right? The category is an interval of possible values that the person can choose to be in. Then we have a party ID, which is going to be for um, political affiliation. Then you have religion, which is another factor. Um, the denomination of that re specific religion, which is going to be another factor. And then the amount of TV hours that people watch, which is going to be an integer. So then we're going to be working with this data set for the following example. So if we um, if we do, for example, if we want to see what are the levels of a specific um, column or a specific one of these variables, then what we can do is GSS cat, which is going to be our table, and then we pass it on to count, which is going to just give us exactly how many um, people, because each, each row is a person, right? How many people are um, classified as the variable that we want in this? case race so then that's going to give us the possible um, values that the factor can take and then additionally obviously it's going to give us how many rows are in that specific uh, category so that's a way a very easy way to see the levels of the factor when you have a table that has nothing to do with forecasts but it's just an example that they gave and then let's say we want to modify the order of a specific factor. So then let's see an example first. Imagine that we want to see here a graph that has the amount of TV hours that each religious category or religion category um, watches, right? So if in this case, if they didn't answer, if they maybe, I don't know, for whatever reason they didn't answer, that was, um, I suppose this is the mean. So this is going to be the average number of TV hours that a person for each one of these religion categories or religion affiliations that they watch, right? So, um, but when we do this graph, however great it may look, it's a little disorganized, right? Because by setting the factors like this, it's kind of difficult to see a trend and it looks like disorganized in a way, right? So what we could do is, because we don't care really that um, about the order of the values that this factor can have. So for example, Catholic or Jewish, it doesn't matter, like none of them go first first or second, there's not a specific order. So that we can organize it by the X, um, by whatever it is that we have as, as, as X, right? So then it's gonna make much more sense. So for example, if we reorder it like this, where we put the highest value that the X axis can have at the top, and then it goes down, 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 it's so much easier to see a trend. And the way to do this is if we start here with um, this religion summary is gonna be just the mean of the, because it's organized by age, by TV hours, and the number of people that are looking into this category, right? So then once we have that small little summary of our data that we wanna work with, all the we have to do is put it in a mutate or that little table then mutate and we're going to create a new either create a new variable or just recycle one of the um one of the variables that we have here but in this case we're going to create a new one called religion and we're going to use the function fct underscore reorder and what that's going to do is this religion factor that we have, it's going to organize it by this x, um, by this x vector, in this case, whatever it is that we have on, on, on the x axis. So the 
arguments for that function factor in the order are first f, which is going to be this one, religion. So it's going to be the factor whose levels you want to modify. In this case, modify the order, right? You want to reorder that factor. Then the x, which is going to be in this case TV hours, it's going to be a numeric factor that you, that you want to use to reorganize the levels. So in this case, because we want it to be um, going highest to lowest or whatever value they have on the x-axis, that's the variable that we're going to put here. And then you can just do your ggplot and then that's it, you have it, you have it reorganized. And this is much more easier to sort of see the trend or to sort of understand the data than the other one that was a little bit disorganized. Um, now let's say you want to change the levels of a factor. Instead of organizing them or, or ordering them, what you want to do is change um, some of the levels that you have because these levels are going to be in a specific order but you, in a way, want to change that. So let's say you have you do another summary where you have, again, the mean age of the people that are answering this uh, survey, the mean uh, number of TV hours that they watch, and the number of people for each one of those categories. So using that little table that you have here that you have summarized, you're going to then use, um, you're going to do a ggplot with that little table, and then you're going to set age as your x-axis, and then on y, you're going to have the income that you want. But if you just set y equals r income, the order that's going to have your y-axis or the order that the factors are going to appear is going to be specifically the one that you have uh, set in your levels, right? But if you want to, for whatever reason, move one of those levels here, then all you do is factor re-level using, again, the factor, and then the category that you want to send to the bottom of the y-axis or to the um, bottom category of the y-axis. So in this case, for example, not applicable. I don't remember where it was originally, but let's say I think not applicable was on the top level, if I'm not mistaken. I cut it out just to make this easier. But it didn't make any sense to have it on top. So maybe you want, because it's not applicable, you really don't want people to focus on that category first. So that's why you send it to the bottom. So that's how you use factor re-level. So these factor, these, so these values of the factor, they have a specific order that you don't want to mess with. But because there are certain categories here, like refused or no, no answer, maybe you want to reorganize them. You don't want them to appear at the top level or you want to reorganize them, even if they are here, for example, not applicable and then refused. You want to sort of reorganize them in a way, then you do factor re-level. And the category that you set here or that you put here as the uh, next to the uh, to the factor, it's going to be the one that you send or the ones because you can send many more, the ones you send to the bottom of the, of the y-axis. Okay, so another way of seeing this is also, um, let's say we want to have, instead of doing a, um, scatter plot, you're gonna, you wanna do a, a line plot. And in this case, both variables X and Y are gonna be um, numeric, right? So they're gonna be continuous uh, variables. But you want to set the color for each one of the, categories that you want to see these two variables of, right? So you want to reorganize those levels. In this case, this marital status, right? You want to reorganize it because what you what we have here is the age of the respondents, the proportion, the proportion um, of people that fall into each one of those categories so that you can see, for example, um, how obviously these categories are varying. So if you have something like this, but not necessarily makes too much sense in order to sort of see the levels, you want to reorder for whatever reason, you want to reorganize the way those levels are here, 
So you do factor the order too. And then this function is a little tricky to see, but it's actually, once you understand it, once you get it, you get it. So what factor the order two is gonna do is your factor, which is gonna be marital category, your marital status, right? That category, that factor that you have, I shouldn't say category, is gonna organize it by the top level of H, so whatever it is that you have on your X axis, it's gonna look at it at the highest value of, of that X axis, and that's how it's gonna organize. Um, no, wait, let me read you actual definition. So my English is terrible, and I knew I was gonna, do I have the book here? Yes, okay. So, factors. Okay, so factor reorder to reorder is a factor F. There we go. So let's think marital uh, status. Reorder is a factor F by the Y values associated with the largest X value. That's how you see it. Okay. So it, it makes a lot of sense when you see it. Um, when you see it reorganized here, because what it's doing is the first value that you see here, which is going to be widowed, is going to appear first, and then, which is going to be the highest. The largest, when x is largest, and this is going to be the highest value that it can get. So then this is is going to be the first one to appear, then the second one to appear is going to be this one, married. And then the other ones, which are not e very easy to see, but they're here. So it's in a way a little bit easier to read when, than when they are disorganized, which is like this. So then that's just a way of organizing the colors a little bit better. The other uh, function that can be useful when you're dealing with bar plots specifically is the um, function factor. Oh, sorry about that. FCT infric and uh, FCT rev. So the idea is that this fun function FCT infrac or infrequent, I suppose it is in English, what it's doing is just reorganizing this category the, or this factor of marital status into um, the least frequent to the most frequent. So it's just organizing them in that order because the way that it's going to be organized at first, if you don't set any, if you don't, if you just do um, digiplot AS X equals marital, it's going to organize it in the way that the levels are organized. So whatever level you have first, it's going to appear here. So if you do in a mutate, the FCT in freak, in freak, in frequent, I don't really know how to read that function. What it's going to do is just going to set it from the most frequent to the least frequent. And if you want to reverse it, that's why you have this here, so that it's going to be from least frequent to most frequent. That's the only thing that this thing is, is doing, just organize it up not by the levels, but by the uh, frequency that they appear. OK, and then we have here, if you want to modify factor levels, I think this is the last few bits that we have. So if you want to modify factor levels, and this is so common. I've done this so many times, but not using factory code. I've used phase one, I suppose. Um, so if you want to modify, for example, the levels of that factor that you have, you want to, you start with five, but then you really want to set, um, um, diminish them to three values, not necessarily the five that you started with, or you want to change the names inside of the, uh, the possible value that you have, there's any type of recoding that you want to do with the values of your factor, then you use that function FCT recode. So it's going to allow you to, it's kind of like recode in uh, dplyr, but 
but this is specifically tailored for factors. So what you do inside a mutate, all you do is start with the fact with the factor that you want, the column uh, that you want. It has to be a factor, obviously, and then you're gonna say that you want to recall that factor. In this case, we're using the same name, but this could be the num the name of the column, right? It could be a different one. In this case, we're recycling the name, but this could be whatever column that you have that you want to work with. And then this is going to be the new name equals the old name. So this is the old value of the uh, the, fact, the, the of the factor that you have. And then this is going to be that new name, the new recorded name that you have. So if we see this, what you what you see here are going to be the new names versus the old names. Okay, the other way to use for cats with factors is to combine groups. For example, if you have a bunch of categories in your factor, or, or, or levels, I should say, but you don't want them to be different levels. You want them to be the same level, no answer, don't know another party. You want them to be the same level, which is going to be other. Then what you can do is inside a mutate, you again assign whatever name you want your column to have. And then uh, you use the function FCT recode, the column that you want to recode. And then all you do is recycle the name other equals the old num, the old value, the old level, the old level, yeah. Then you do again other for the one of the other levels that you want to uh, recode, and then other again for the uh, older name, right? When you do that, you're going to see that all of those are combined together into a new category called other. Okay. And then another way of doing this um, is if, for example, you have too many levels, because in here you only had two that you wanted to combine in other. But if you have too many, not just three, but like five, six, or something like that, then you can do factor collapse. Same way inside a mutate, and then you set the categories that you have other. In this case, it's going to be rep for Republican, Independent, and Democrat. And then you put inside a vector all the names of the levels that you want to uh, collapse into this other category, right? So that's another way of just collapsing a lot of those levels into two, three, or four categories. And then another way of doing kind of like that, but a little different because what you're doing here is lumping together several small groups. So this one, I don't know if I would ever use it. It sounds a little like I'm not controlling the levels too, too much. But anyway, they give the example, so I'm going to go through this. But what you do is, let's say you have a factor, and then when you do the counts, you see that there are some of those um, levels that have like one or two or three in the um, in the count, right? Like So very few people responded or correspond to that specific uh, level of the, of the factor. So what you do is you want to lump them up into a category called other. So all the small groups that you have, all those small levels that have like one or two people are gonna be lumped together in a category that if you don't set it, it's going to be other. Automatically, it's going to be other. But you can do here, um, I think it's name equals, and then you can set the name for this um, low frequency group that you have. Let's say you don't want other, but you want um, small values or whatever it is that you want to use for, um, for the name of the category, right? Automatically, it's going to name them other. But you can also set it, right? So all those levels are going to be lumped here. So like I said, you have very little control here because what levels are in there? God only knows, right? But anyway. So read the documentation for both of them because there are obviously low frequency. Like I said, all the ones that have very low frequency are going to be lumped together into that other category. But there's also another function similar that is going to be FCT lump min and FCT lump prop, which is going to be, they're going to be different. 
Um, I don't remember. Do I have the link here? No. I don't remember what they do, even though I check. But we can check, for example, here. Let's see, two. Um, then, oh, yeah, it's here. Lumps the levels that appear fewer than a minimum amount of times. Um, prop is going to do um, the same thing, but when you set the proportion of n times, so you set your proportion, so less than 20% or well, 0.2 or less than 0.3 or less than 0.5. Uh, lump n is going to be uh, for the n most frequent. Lumps of levels except for the n most frequent. But you can set, I think you can set that level. Okay. And then FCT lump low frequency is the one that we just saw. Okay. So, so those, those are other functions that you can find useful or that you can see. And, um, and yeah, then they say they talk about ordered factors, um, which is going to be factors that have obviously a specific and a strict order between them because there's a, a specific set distance between these levels. Um, so if you are working with ordered factors you s and you use the function ordered instead of factor, then they're going to be, when you use ggplot, they're going to uh, be colored using scale color viridis or scale fill viridis because you set them up as something ordered. And there's a package called Tho and a specific function called contrast that you can uh, see more about in case you want to be working with these types of factors. And then that said, the other thing that I always find somehow useful, I don't know if I should mention it here, it's this, that sometimes if you, when you're doing a ggplot, and you, oh, for, forgive me for the colors because they look horrendous, but those are the ones that I could remember. If you are working with, um, in this case, I'm working with the same thing, the marital status, right? And if you set in the scale field manual, because this is a, um, a bar plot, in the scale field manual uh, function, if you use each one of your um, levels of, your factor, and then you set them up as a specific color, then that's a very, um, a little bit cumbersome, but you can control the color that each one of your factors is going to have. So I always find it super useful and people sometimes forget about it. So, um, so yeah, and then that's it, you guys. That's all I have for this chapter. Thank you, Gabby. I'm gonna stop sharing. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think that's it. You go. Right. I don't, this is a very easy chapter. I don't think it was anything complicated. Yeah, I uh, actually rarely use forecasts. I don't know uh, what you... Uh... Right? Yeah, me too. I always forget, but they're useful. Yeah. I uh, mostly manage myself with uh, the factor function, um, but it is useful to know that some uh, things can be more automated with forecasts, I think, especially yeah. recoding, reordering. Yeah. I need to. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so, should we say stop here?